Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, Rhino here, and I'm actually going to be bringing you kind of a sad video, um, and then also an explanation video. <clears throat> so basically, as you probably can tell from the title, um, a girl in my dorm named Lauren uh, died yesterday. Um, and I'll, uh, I'm going to start off by telling you the story of how I found out. So she lives about three doors that way. I'm at the end of the hall on this side. Um, so there's, there's like a stairway on this side of my dorm. But this way, she lives about three doors down. And um, I got up uh, like a typical morning, went to class at uh, 9.30. And um, I had a class for an hour and 20 minutes. And then after that, I had a 40 minute break. Then I had another class for an hour and 20 minutes. Then I had another 40 minute break. And then I had a class for an hour 50. And uh, it was at two o'clock. While we were in that class, I was sitting next to one of my friends who also lives in the dorm with me. And um, he was on his Mac. He was doing the thing where you can text with your Mac because he has an iPhone and a Mac so he can, he can text uh, his friends. And, um, one of my friend, one of our friends here was uh, t telling him that uh, a girl died in our dorm, and so the guy's name is Ben, who was in my class. He turns to me and he goes, "Hey, dude, uh, you know Lauren?" And I'm like, "Yeah," and he was like, "She's dead," and so they texted back and forth a little bit more. Um, she had some sort of really bad illness not like cancer but like um like a, a a true sickness i guess like a something temporary but <clears throat> that's not a true like it's not bad like cancer but it's um something it's a disease that is not you know uh incurable uh they believed it was menin meningi meningitis or something like that i can't remember the name of the disease but uh, basically after the hour 50 class, I went to my girlfriend's dorm and I was telling her and um, her roommate about it and we were like talking about it and then I got an email about it, which confirmed it. Um, I didn't know if it was, there was some sort of, you know, uh, confusion there. Like maybe she had just been rushed to the hospital um, and my friend thought she died, but she didn't or something like that. But there, we got a true email from the school saying that she did die. Um, and what happened was basically uh, she, for the past week, was really sick. She was throwing up a bunch, um, like, like violently throwing up. She felt like shit. She was horrible, horribly sick for the past week. Um, the night before she died, she was really bad and she was she was basically like she like couldn't throw up anymore like she was just dry heaving and crying like really hard she felt horrible um her door was wide open and she was like waking up the people who are like right next to her and our, the ra who lives across the hall from her like directly across um called an called an ambulance and they took her to the hospital um, actually, I don't know if he called an ambulance. I just know they, uh, he was, he was talking to someone and they took her to the hospital, um, at the hospital. This was like 2am at the hospital. She, um, was looked at and they basically just said, you just have the flu. Um, just try to rest, try to, you know, be careful. You know, the typical, typical things with the flu. Um, I actually haven't had the flu in a long time, so I'm not really sure the, uh, the solutions, uh, to help the flu. And then they discharged her. She came back to her dorm and went to sleep. And the next morning, her roommate left for class. When her roommate came back after class, she found um, Lauren passed out, like unconscious, with vomit all over her shirt. And she was bleeding out of her ears. She immediately called... 911. Um, they rushed in. When they got to her, she didn't have a pulse. So they loaded her up and they were rushing her to the hospital. And uh, they were using the defibrillators to try to, you know, start her heart back up. And uh, she was pronounced dead on the way to the hospital. 
they believe that it was the meningitis that there has been a few cases at our school when caught early it's easy to treat it's just you know it's pretty deadly and it needs to be it needs to be treated uh, if it's left untreated you can die um, it's not confirmed yet as of I'm making this video they did an autopsy today and uh, it was inconclusive they didn't find anything um, they're doing they're gonna conduct some more tests um, in the next <sighs> few weeks um, to try to figure out exactly what it is because she lived on my floor if it's something contagious I've like hung out with her in the last week or two and so I could be at risk of getting it too and so they're trying to confirm that they're trying to see what um, what should be done uh, who is at risk of what and so on and so forth but a lot of the people on my floor are really struggling with uh, her death she was a really outgoing girl very friendly and um, I can tell that they're just struggling and it's hard for me because I I'm not struggling with it um, I, I've come to terms with death. I, under, I understand death, and um, it doesn't really sadden me anymore. Uh, I feel the only sad part is seeing how other people react, um, are reacting to her, and how, how they're dealing with this. And this brings me to the question that people ask me a lot, you know, how, how do you deal with death? Like, how do you tell yourself that whoever dies is in a better place how are you not terrified of dying um you know based on your beliefs uh you you just are, it's just blackness and my answer to that is because i know that even though you enter oblivion you're just gone you're no longer suffering there's no pain there's no suffering, there's no sadness, there's no fear. It's all gone. Um, Lauren doesn't feel anything right now. She's not conscious. She doesn't, she's not surrounded by darkness. She's just gone. And that, for me, is comfort enough. Because, yeah, I mean, it's sad that she should have lived a longer life. 18, 19 year old girl. No, never, no one 18 or 19 years old should die. And it's sad that her life was cut, cut short, but with dealing with a death, I know she's, she's fine. She's no longer sick. She's no longer in pain. She's not afraid. She feels, well, she doesn't feel anything, but she doesn't feel like shit. And to answer the question on how it's not scary for me um a fair amount of atheists are afraid of death i'm not because i don't think it's i mean i understand what it's going to be um and you know i've i've come to terms with that i've it's something i've thought about for the past like seven or eight years and it, it, over that time i've just slowly become more and more accepting of what i am what I'm going to be, what's going to happen to me inevitably, and how I need to deal with that. Um, when when people ask me, well, based on the atheist point of view, that's a really scary death. Yeah, death is a scary thing. I mean, no one's going to make fun of you for being afraid of death. No matter, I mean, w w until we can prove for certain one way or the other what happens after you die there's always uncertainty and the best way for me to answer what is it like after you die is simply to ask remember what it was like before you were born it's just like that you're just gone you don't exist you don't feel anything, you don't see anything, you aren't anything, you're just gone. Your consciousness, the, the consciousness in your brain is gone. Whatever your parents do to your body, that's what's left of you. And that may be scary, and I apologize for anyone who has a fear of death. 
that's not I don't take that lightly at all it's just how I personally deal with death how I look at the inevitability of my death and because of that I'm more than willing to sacrifice myself for someone else if a gunman walked into one of my classrooms and said if one of you sacrifices yourself I'll let everyone else go I would sacrifice myself knowing that in a lecture hall full of 200 300 maybe up to 500 people I'd one person would be dying and the rest would be living as opposed to if he just opens fire he could probably kill 10 15 people and my life isn't worth any more than anybody else's life and if I can save more than what I what I lose in that which would be one life if I can save more than one life and losing one life then it is a successful sacrifice I consider myself a hero in that case and that's not what I'm trying to be I'm just that's just how I am I value everyone's life as equals and that's why I would be able to sacrifice myself I'm not afraid of dying and knowing well I wouldn't know after that but I would be up until I was killed I would know that I'm doing a great deed well that's about it for the video guys I'm sorry to bring you a depressing video um, it's just a depressing time right now you can't really bring across a video like this in any other way um, I, I really hope that everyone handles this well everyone handles Lauren's death well in, the, in my, my dorm and anyone watching this video I hope you are able to handle losing loved ones and the inevitabil inevitability of your own death well and I hope you are able to eventually grasp that I get a text right as the video ends but thanks for watching guys make sure to comment rate and subscribe and have a nice day.